Dr. Vishnu Raghunath. Pleasant good evening to you, sir. Good evening. Good evening. It's a pleasure to be here. Yes. Well, a lot has transpired over the weekend. I mean, basically has um, brought to highlight just how vulnerable, um, you know, many of the leaders are. And, and this happening in a, the, one of the most developed countries in the world, the United States. We're talking about that uh, attempted assassination on former president candidate, Republican nominee uh, Donald Trump. And, and you said, of course, interview that it goes back to the code of conduct we have here where we try to get political leaders to temper their speech and so on. But let me ask you to begin with, how does one then define when one says political peacock and uh, some statement or narrative that can be presented that can create some sort of political violence? How do we differentiate between what is said as far as political peacock based on our local polit uh, political culture? Um, I, I would tell you that when the, the, the council was first set up, way back in 2015, that was one of the concerns that was raised with us. And more critically, I remember sitting on, on a, a morning show one morning and uh, a caller called in and challenged me that I was trying to mash up the way Trinidad politics is is done because we are based on this issue of Pekong. While that may be so, herein comes the question, is there, is there a limit that we should try to adhere to? Is there a line that we should not cross? And these are things that, um, again, it, it will depend upon the political party, the political leader, really and truly it is for us as the citizens to say what is acceptable and what is not and it is from that perspective that i have to say that yes it this is a concern this is our culture we, we like the bacchanal we like the peacock but the point about it is there a line that we should not cross and uh this is where our politicians have to be the ones as leaders to tell their, their members where that line is and why they should not cross it because we live in perilous times and for all intents and purposes what is acceptable as peacock for me to, and you may very well be insightful or inflaming language for others uh, and, and one would think after so many years of independence that we have evolved to the point where uh, none of that is necessary to gain political traction, but basically sticking to the core facts. Um, and, and, and let me ask you, does anybody at all that you've encountered with perceive that by using any sort of language that may be insulting gives them that political edge? No, it doesn't. It doesn't really give them any political edge, you know what? When they use insulting language, when they use language that that tries to incite um, their supporters, uh, basically what they are, who they are speaking to is only their supporters. They're not speaking to the wider population who would be more discerning as to exactly what they want to hear. But again, uh, politicians only see and hear what is in their interest and what benefits them. So from that perspective, they will continue to say, um, well, we will continue to do what we have to do, but, and there is always the but there as to what is acceptable and what is not acceptable. Yeah, I, I mean, historically, uh, we've always heard about, you know, there, there's always going to be some gang or, or whatever that uh, may fought somewhere in Woodford Square, what have you. We don't, we don't have that sort of history as much as Jamaica and some other parts of the region and parts of the world. But one of the things you did highlight based on our current crime situation, this environment, guns are, are easily accessible. Many of the crimes are being committed by guns. So it is easy for someone to simply perhaps take something out of context and say, you know what, I don't like what is being said. And uh, you copycat many of the things that are being done across the world, and especially what happened over the weekend. I mean, I mean what is the high likelihood of that taking place? Well, I will still keep my fingers crossed and say 
the likelihood of that happening is 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 not um, very high. But after 1990, I have stopped saying that cannot happen here. Um, to be honest with you, I was one of those who, in 1990, would have said that can't happen here. So let's just say it, forget it. But the point about it, in 1990, happened and. Um, as at this point in time, I will never say again, that cannot happen here. We need, however, to be cautious. We need to be concerned, especially in light of what is happening around the world, in light of what we see um, from some of our own citizens here. I mean, we've heard, for instance, um, the Prime Minister speaking about uh, a possible coup um, by a uh, cult. Yeah. Now, some people may say that that is just talk, oh, and, and it may very well be just talk, but the point about it, uh, like I said before, when we talked about 1990, I said, that cannot happen here. That does mean to say it will not happen here, and we have to be wary of that. Yeah, you said, of course, that unlike the United States, uh, we don't have that deep ideological difference uh, within our society, but we do have an issue, of course, of racial differences. And there are those who will fan the flames of that division, uh, believing that it would gain some sort of mileage politically for them. Um, have we reached to that point that we understand as far as being socially mature to understand, listen, this is old talk, don't buy into it, it comes around every five years or whenever the election bell is ring, or is it something now that we're seeing where so many people um, are, are just simply not just going to let these things slip away as they did before? And that, and that remains the issue, whether people will simply um, say it, uh, it it will slip away the way it did before. Um, we don't know. We don't, and it's a different culture, a different group of people, a different mindset of people, and that's the concern that I really had when I, when I was asked uh, for those comments, because it's a whole different mindset of people. Um, and this is why, for instance, I, I made reference to the fact that guns are so easily accessible because. Uh, we see now people just simply spraying down, when I say spraying down, with, with, with bullets, um, normal, decent establishments, and they couldn't be bothered as to who is going to be hurt. And that, I think, is where we have changed uh, from where we were 20 years ago, 30 years ago, uh, when we would say, okay, fine, you know, um, let, let, let's just leave it there and, and it, it would not impact upon us. We cannot say that anymore. And, and how do we go about making that, of course, I mean, if, if we're looking at this from all angles, this is not one dimensional. There, there has to be a psychological component to it. Uh, who is to say where the red flags exist and who is to say that this is what we need to be looking for? For example, John may have lost his job. He, he blames the administration. He has a, a, a personal axe to grind. Uh, are, we again, are we again basically being our brother's keeper when it comes to all of these things? Well, it has to be that we have to be our brother's keeper. Um, because if we are not our brother's keeper, then we are all lost. Um, and I say that, uh, unfortunately, and, uh, you know, to tie in a lot of what we're talking about here uh, with something that happened in not in the not too distant past when we had this gentleman from canada came coming into trinidad and interviewing these gang members and gang leaders and all of whom were walking around with their guns what they kept saying is that the government was not uh, providing us with jobs there's a high level of frustration amongst the young people and so on and that is the kind of concern that we have to bear, whether or not these fellows who have the guns, who have access to the guns, and with their level of frustration, hearing a politician or deciding that, you know, they do it in, in, in America and they, 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 they didn't kill Trump, but they, they shoot at him. You know, we could frighten some of them politicians. The unfortunate part about it is that even if they, they start thinking along those lines, the fact is they are not, I mean, 
I, I would like to say that the, the, the shooter in the United States was a marksman to have missed Trump, uh, whether deliberately or not. But the point about it, I am not sure our young people are, are so trained and so well disciplined to handle a gun the way that he would have handled it. And that, I, that is our fear that I have as at this point in time. Yeah, and of course, you did mention the entire copycat, uh, that whole copycat uh, issue in our society, where many of the things that are being done, for example, jogging, uh, where Trinidadians have copied. And, and that is a technique used by criminals that involves spotting a victim, withdrawing money at the ATM, or doing a transaction at the bank, following them, um, and at their most vulnerable point, uh, basically coming upon them and, and taking the money. Uh, we, we're seeing that with home invasions, which is the new criminal uh, trend that is, is taking place. Um, easel, easily influenced. Uh, and, and one has to understand that basically that's just like a, a keg of dynamite just waiting to explode. Again, how much can we tell the leaders, listen, this is serious. I mean, regardless of what we all want to win, uh, you want your party to win, you want the best person to win, you want good governance, but at what cost? And this is, and this is where, uh, when, when I said earlier, we have to be our brother's keeper. We are the ones who have to tell our leaders, you have to, 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 to pull up your socks. You have to know what you're doing. You have to be mindful of the, the challenges of the society. And you have to, to instruct your membership of how to behave in a manner that will maintain our civilization rather than simply cause us to go down a, a road where none of us really want to go. Yeah. The Prime Minister, I just want you to weigh in on this, of course, uh, before you go. Uh, the National Security Council met yesterday uh, after the bloody weekend, and the Prime Minister said that in terms of solution, uh, the security services and the heads of the department agree to the deployment in a coordinated and collaborative manner of sustained joint operations, particularly in areas where there's a known concentration of criminal activity. Um, Dr. Ragunath, we have been here before. We've had this conversation. We've heard it time and time again. Is there, I mean, is there really a strong will? I mean, we had a CARICOM conference. Uh, heads of different state bodies across the region came, and yet still we haven't seemed to be able to even start to put a dent into this social ill. Well, that I think, I mean, my views on, on that crime consultation that we had there, I think I, uh, my views are well known, that I, I thought it was a complete waste of time um, in that we, we tried to, to listen to everybody else's problems but rather than find solutions to our own. And that is why I said it was a waste of time. Not that it, 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 uh, it, it could not have borne any fruit, but the fact of the matter is we refused to listen to our own voices and our own concerns and give everybody else a listening ear. So that, from that perspective, we need to start thinking. The, I, I think the, it is well reported today uh, in the media, that the, the business community has already said enough is enough. Um, they, they are waiting for action now. And the simple concern here that the, the Deputy Commissioner of Police yesterday would have said, well, we're going to in increase visibility and we're going to put all our police stations on alert and so on. We've heard all of that over and over and over again. What we need now is action. And I mean, uh, uh, somebody, um, I, I listened yesterday to when the, the commissioner, the deputy commissioner of police says, well, you know, there'll be some degree of um, where, where people will be inconvenienced and so yeah. forth. And I said, well, it's about time that people um, understand that there, there is inconveniences. But the point about it is simply, while we will say there are inconveniences, the, the, act, the inconvenience actions has to be stepped up significantly. Yeah. I mean, I have been one who have lived, um, studied in Jamaica, and I will always recall uh, while I was there, there would be lockdowns of the, the Augustown community, literally from 1 o'clock in the night 
you would hear helicopters and and everything else and the community was locked down and in order that uh the police and the joint forces carry out searches to make to remove guns and and whatever else we are still at that stage where boy we don't want to do anything that will will uh, look bad and, yeah. and make the country look bad and so on but we have passed that stage we've passed the stage where making the country look bad the country is already looking bad to the outside world hence all the the various travel uh, advisories, advisories yeah. and so forth that that literally people are saying i mean don't go to trinidad it's not yeah. safe you're right about that Dr. Ragnar, thank you so much for taking time out. As always, always a pleasure to have you on. Keep up the good work, and we'll be checking in with you periodically. It's been my pleasure. Thank you so much. Folks, don't forget, Strong Heart is an...